Hi everyone and welcome to another Soul Talk here on my channel. I'm so happy because today we're going to have a very interesting topic and I have a wonderful guest here. I completely forgot to ask how I'm going to spell the name so I hope I'm not going to get it uh, wrong. Ohan Kai Cha Ka sorry. <laughs> you said can you say your name please? Of course I can and you can call me Ohan which you did perfect. My last name is Kai Chan. But Kai Ohan Chan. is fine. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. And Ohan Kai Chan is a doctor of economics and a CFP professional with over 20 years of financial industry experience. He's the founder of OhanTheMoneyDoctor.com. Love that name, by the way. I appreciate Ohan, <laughs> Ohan has been featured on Money Geek, Yahoo Finance, US News, and on many other outlets. And I'm so excited for everyone going like, May, but you do energy stuff. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a bit. But for now, welcome, Ohan. So It's so incredibly nice to have you here. First and foremost, it's my pleasure to be here. I like very much your, the name of your podcast, and we'll have some uh, soul conversations today. And then when you mention about energy, goosebumps went through my skin, because money is all about energy. Money is energy itself. Exactly. <laughs> we'll, thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. We'll talk about all these different topics, but thank you for uh, having me in your podcast. I'm very excited. <laughs> thank you so much. And so great to have that sentence. We're going to start with that soon. But for now, for everyone to know, who are you? And I mean, I already, we already said a little bit in the biography, but like, who are you and what are you doing right now? Like, what's your website about? Oh, we are all doctor. international. We are all international, you know. So I came to United States in 2009. Prior to that, I was working in the bank and I was a lo um, loan officer for small and medium enterprises. And then for some period, I worked with Frankfurt School of Finance and Management as a mortgage underwriter and trainer and bank advisor. When I came to the United States, it was hard for me at the beginning to find a job. The reason being, my English was not enough. And still, I'm learning English every day. Every day is new, um, uh, how to say I'm living a cultural shock because I'm learning new things. This is a new culture for me. But after like practicing English a little bit, I found a job as a cashier, as a teller in a, in a major bank in the United States. Then um, I realized that I should start from the beginning. Many of my friends were telling me like, you, you have all this experience and you are going to start as a cashier. But uh, I just wanted to do that because I didn't know simple stuff when I used to be a cashier and people come to ask me like, hey, can you break this $100 bill? I thought like you can break a window, you can break a glass, but you cannot break a bill. I didn't know what means break a bill. So I learned everything, like in especially in American culture, uh, we speak different English than English in, 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 in British sense. So the moment I realized no one speaks English in America, I started speaking as well. So and then um, next, uh, my job was a personal banker. Then I got my securities licenses. I became a private banker. Then I evaluated my diplomas from back home and uh, I got uh, something called Certified Financial Planner, which is a designation. So uh, they asked me to um, evaluate my diploma. So I got the equivalency in PhD, Doctor of Economics in United States. Then with all this experience and working in United States in financial industry specifically, I did realize that people always avoid to deal with their money because in a sense, the uh, industry made it so complicated. When people start talking in their jargon, I always mention that Money is a language, you know, you need to learn. So my goal is now to simplify the money matters as much as I can. And you mentioned about my webpage. My webpage is ohandamoneydoctor.com. And when our listeners decide to go there, first they will be able to download a free gift that I have for everyone. They just need to put their email address so they can get wealth roadmap that I created for the three steps to start their journey to financial independence. Also, I recently started offering one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Again, our listeners can go ahead and um, um, book a 30-minute free of charge, no obligation type of call. Just 
like we are doing on a Zoom, we can do on a Zoom or on the phone just to see if we like each other, if I can help you to bring your financial success on next level. So this is in a nutshell what I'm doing now. In the meantime, I'm guest in various podcasts. I write uh, some articles. I uh, My goal is to make the financial uh, topics, money matters as simple as possible. I love that so much because I feel that whenever we think about, like you said, I prefer not to look, you know, like people are, I prefer not, I, and it happened to me for a long time as well. I prefer not to look at my money situation. Is there what it is? And I'm just going to live with what, with whatever I have and, and not even, and that's, that's also another part, not even thinking about the future, which of course, if we're, if we're thinking about being our energetic selves, and of course we want to be more in the now, Um, but still there are ways on how to live in the now and still, you know, create abundance, create wealth for ourselves. Um, and I love that there's people like you that show, show people like me on how to do it easier in an easier way. Um, that is so amazing. Thank you so much for, for your work in, in, in that. Pleasure is mine. Because whenever Pleasure I think of, I, I remember when, when I hadn't had started looking at it, Um, it was something so foreign and so hard. And like, if you, I mean, of course, in my case, I'm, I'm in Germany and there's so many laws and so many restrictions or guidelines on how to do things. So you, you have these huge books that you have to go through just to do your taxes every year. And so I know, I, I think a lot of people also miss out on so many tax opportunities just because they're not taking the time to, to look at it. Everything takes time. Uh, and like for, for someone like you, it can be easy to speak German because you live in Germany. But if I want to learn German, it will take big um, amount of time first and foremost, but big practice for me. So it will take time. So I always give the message to my followers, my friends and family that money has its own language. And you need to learn that language with this all uh, free content that I post on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok everywhere I can as much as I'm able. Um, I want to make this money language accessible, easy way to understand. But again, it will take time because like if I want to learn, um, as I mentioned, any language, again, like I need to practice, I need to speak on it. So at least for my followers start listening what is, let's say, in the United States, like individual retirement account, or what is a brokerage account, or in the world, what is a stock, what is money, how it works, what is the difference between banks and brokerage houses or brokerage firms. So all these, I'm trying my best to simplify for our listeners to understand. What would you say would be like the very first step to take if to understand money best the whole energy behind money best great question and uh, money i uh, compare in in times first and foremost as i mentioned it's an energy but in the meantime money i compare with a hammer you know it's like a tool with hammer you can break again windows and do lots of damage to house but in the meantime with hammer you can build house so money is the same way when you are using money so there is this saying yes like money brings uh, the best of everything that you have for some people they are do they are doing good things so if they have more money they will do good more good things mm -hmm. for unfortunately for many people who are doing bad things and we are not uh, we don't want anyone in our audience to be a good person but they will do more uh, bad person my bad they will do more bad things so depending what you are trying to do Money will just accelerate. Money will just bring that abilities more you, because you will have more tools in your hand. But first step, regardless of where you are in the world, like which country you are, what language you speak, in order for you to take control of your money, so it not happen the opposite way, so money takes control of you, you need to do something called budgeting. And I know Many people don't like the word budgeting because it seems like restricting because, oh, I live on budget. It seems like you are telling your, you are believing that you are living on 
uh, restricted budget. But in the meantime, I will suggest our listeners to think differently. way. With budgeting, you will know exactly how much comes in and how much goes out and we, on different like items that you are spending your money. The big three items, we know everyone, it's our housing, it's transportation, it's food, you know, housing, food, transportation, three major expenses. So if you don't like the word budget, I will suggest you to change it with, let's say, spending plan. You can have, you can call it a spending plan or cash flow statement, but you need to have something in place. Nowadays with technology, there are so many applications available. You can do, um, you can put the information, how much money comes from all the sources that you have income from. Let's say your salary, let's say you have a side hustle or business on a side. You just add up all the income and then you go item by item to see what you are making spendings on. And easier way to do that, again, with technology, you can go uh, and check your bank statement for your credit card and debit card just to see what you spent for, let's say, last month. I always suggest that at least go back for three months so you can have a little bit average because there are some months that we spend more on certain areas than it is our usual spending. But the first step will be to start with budgeting. And if you are not willing to use technology because of like some people have uh, concerns about security, they don't want to share their information with all these online applications. I will suggest to do it even on a paper or you can open an Excel file or Google Sheets and just do it there. But the key is to find out how much comes in, how much goes out. And when you do the difference, there are actually three options will happen. The first option, you will have a surplus, which means you have more money coming in than going out. This is a good thing to have. Then because you will listen to me and start saving and investing that money. Versus like it is some case that it will come and stop on a zero mark, which means like everything that comes in goes out. Something in English called living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. So everything comes in, everything goes out. And unfortunately, many people live paycheck to paycheck. And the third option, which is not that much of a welcoming, but in the meantime, we'll work together or we'll educate how to come out of that situation when someone has a deficit. So they have more expenses than the income comes in. And I know our listeners will relate to this, especially in the United States. When this happens, people run to credit cards. People yeah. run to bank to borrow. And then you are realizing that you, you, you are going to pay so much on interest that it doesn't worth of borrowing that $3,000 because above on the 3000 maybe another 3000 is the interest that will come in. There is a very famous quote from Albert Einstein that uh, says that compounding interest is the aid wonder or aid miracle of the world. Who understands, they receive it. Who doesn't understand, they pay it. And what did he means by that? When you put your money to work for you, there is a compounding interest start working on it. Because there will be some moment when you put, when you put money, let's say, for example, $1,000 a year, but now you have such a big amount that it brings 2,000, 3,000 a year. So the money that your money earns works for you is more than the money you are contributing. That is the good part of compounding. But in the meantime, if you have a credit card and you are paying interest on it, interest is calculated on compounding way as well. So sometimes it can seem on the paper like, which is crazy, like 20%, 25% interest, then you are realizing like, oh, why I need, do I really need that TV or that phone? Or I could have just used my old phone or not watch TV whatsoever. <laughs> Instead of I went and I bought that TV on credit and now I need to pay down double of the price. So these are the first steps to think about. Also to differentiate something called needs and wants. Especially someone whose English is not my first language. I was thinking of at the beginning like, okay, uh, uh, hold on a second. Need and want, they sound similar, like almost synonyms. You know, I want it, I need it. Then I did my research a little bit with my education and everything in finance. I realized like need is something that you cannot live without. We cannot live without eating. So food is our need. We cannot live without taking a shower, having a shelter, 
or in many cases to go to work, you need the transportation. So you need to go from your home to your workplace. So these are the needs. And there are some wants. Want can be to eat out, you know, to go out to eat in a restaurant. Or want can be, be a, go to a vacation. So that's a want, that's not a need. So easier in many cases to cut your budget when you are on deficit to go first after the wants. Because maybe you have some subscription to uh, some streaming services or a gym that you are not even using it. That's a want, you know, you can just cut it and you can do your workout in home versus like in many situations, it will be hard to cut on the food. But for housing as well, you can maybe downgrade your housing situation. So instead of living in more of a like metropolitan area like Los Angeles, Berlin, you can live in suburb type of area, especially nowadays with all this virtual technology being available, you know, you can maybe work from home. Then what is the reason for you to live and pay higher rent in some area that you can pretty much work from anywhere in the world? So it's very important to do budget and also think about needs and wants. That's the first step. I like that so much because I mean, I mean, there were several points, but the first one um, that I want to talk about is because I, I second that with creating, like you said, the budget, the budget or the spending plan or whatever you want to call this, because this is also something that is actually one of the first steps that I teach my clients when when we're talking about energies. Because for the empaths, they're so all over the place with their energy. So what I tell them to do first is make an assessment of where you are. What are you feeling? How are you doing? You know, and so it's the same, like you said, with the energy of money. If I want to start understanding it, I need to know where is it coming in? How is it coming in? And where am I? Where is it leaving again? Right. So that I can that I can look at that part and. That's why I think it's interesting how that part, it's always about, okay, let's make an assessment first. Like, where are we right now? And from that point to, to start. Because if you don't know where you are standing now, yeah. how you will figure out where you want to go. You don't know where are you and where you want to go. So there is even like, in man, I cannot remember exact quote and who said it, but you need to have a clear understanding when you are standing now in order for you to decide where you want to move next, you know, where you want to go. It's like a ship comes out of the harbor and like there is no management, meaning like no one is uh, directing the ship which direction to go. It will end up like sinking. That's going to be the case. And uh, same we can apply to money. And uh, it all comes from our, of course, I know we will touch this subject, but it just came to my mind. It all comes from our beliefs and from the environment that we grow up. Because if you grow up in the environment such I was, like my parents, my mother uh, used to teach in school, my father worked in medical uh, field, but they never sit and did their budget. And like, uh, so it will not be in my beliefs, in my system that I need to budget myself. That's why I want to change. They call it like um, to change the generation or even... Uh, direction you know someone needs to do it and i decided in my family that, that i'm i'm that person but i i want to for my daughter to think the the, the same way and budget i i, I don't want uh, our listeners to uh, think that i will advise them or suggest them by the way because we talk about advice this is not advice this is for educational purposes only so i don't give any advice to your homework but i don't want to advise anyone to cut their coffee at the morning or to cut uh, going out with their loved ones no 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 if they bring satisfaction to your life and you feel that's the reason for you to wake up the next day and go to work that is the reason for you to move forward not whatsoever i'm all about like conscious spending you know at least know what you are spending on if, if, if and the, again like very important in my opinion mindset shift will be to switch our consumer mindset to investor mindset if you are someone who is using apple uh, iphone or you, you are someone who is using facebook or you are going to shopping let's say you buy a coffee at starbucks why you don't become part owner of this company because they are publicly traded companies and mm. you can buy 
shares of them. And I'm not uh, for picking and choosing because I don't know what will happen with Tesla or Mercedes moving like in five years or 10 years. So I'm more of a like about diversification. In the United States, there is something called S&P 500, which is index of top 500 companies in the United States. Instead of picking and choosing, you can invest in uh, pieces of all that 500 companies. So in case Tesla goes out of business, the new Tesla comes and will be on the top 500. So all these take time for um, everyone to get educated on the top topics. But if you don't have, uh, if you are, if you do, didn't grow up in family that talk about money, in some cases, even it being a taboo, like, no, we don't talk about money. People who have money, they are not good people. They are evil people. And then, and then these are the beliefs uh, all of a sudden, like, okay, you don't like money, then you will not have money. Okay, uh, only bad people have money. You are a nice person, so don't have money. So these are all beliefs we remind ourselves. So I'm trying my best to give the message out that money is a good thing. Again, if you are a good person, with money, you will do much more good things. We are not talking about, of course, unfortunately, so many instances uh, money gets in bad people's uh, hands. I know governments fight for it. Um, even like uh, journalists fight, fight for it and everything and trying to bring this, how to say, fairness that like you earn money only if you are doing good things, but it doesn't happen, unfortunately. Uh, and um, But the one thing is certain, money is a tool and everyone needs it. Today I live in my house because I pay my rent. Um, I I eat, but I bought the food with money. But if, if it was old age, and let's say May is a barber, and I need a haircut, which I don't need haircut as of this moment, <laughs> I would have like, hey May, give me, give me a haircut, and instead I'll do something else that is my profession. I'll help you with your budgeting, let's say. But now in, in this time and age, money is the way to uh, do that uh, uh, tender, you know, just to change hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, like we get paid because of like the mon money system. Thank you for, for saying again this part about the whole mindset around money, because I feel like especially now going into the spiritual world, there's so much talk about, you know, feeling abundance, feeling freedom. But a lot of people are not, as much as they try, but they're not because um, underneath they have like subconscious uh, views of like, I'm lacking money. Like I remember with my shamanic teacher way back when um, everything was a little bit different. And he was like, yeah, spiritual people are not allowed to to earn money because we're taught we're, we're working with spiritual things. So that is supposed to come free for everybody. So you're not allowed to, you know, actually, you know, ask for money for that, for what you're doing. And um, I think it's so important that, no, it's still energy that we're go going through. And why am I not allowed to, to receive money for the work that I'm doing as a spiritual person? Um, and the same thing, but this is, and, and, and this is not the consumer not wanting to spend the money for it. It's, you know, it's something that it lies within me, like you were saying, most of or a lot of people, maybe I'm not going to put them all on one, but maybe um, this is a question everybody can ask themselves. Do you have that belief system that only bad people get money or that if you get rich, you're going to be a bad person or that you're going to be not nice anymore just because, you know, become a diva just because some of the newspapers have told us about the, the divas in the world. But there are so many people on this planet especially in the last couple of years have come up more and more that are actually using the the money and their fame and and everything to do wonderful things so why can't we be the ones that are doing that right so it's so important to 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 change that energy that is behind our own you know relationship with money and i think it's so important and that's why like i like i said i think like no like you said in the beginning money is energy and if we start thinking about what money actually is energetically in our lives, like you said, what, what do I, you know, what do I believe in? Because in the end, the piece of paper is actually, what was it called? 
Ah, now I only have the German word in my head. Um, note. It's a note that someone, I an IOU. That's the I-O-U. English word. Yes, Basically, right. every, every um, money that we get in our hands is just an IOU from someone else, from some right. system that was created. And may a uh, very, very great point you mentioned, like, and uh, and of course we need to um, work our beliefs about money and uh, the word currency. Yes, if we, if you again, I'm not a linguist, and uh, some people more than welcome to correct me. But currency it's from the word current. You know, just to move. You know, money doesn't like to come in and be hoarded, and you are not using it. Because like if you put let's say hundred dollar bill on the table, and we leave that uh, hundred dollar there, and we come back after ten years, the money is sitting there. It hasn't done anything, and it's same hundred dollar is sitting there. Versus you could put that again like current. You can put in the flow, and it will do more than just sitting there. You can do simple things sounds simple but again you need to do your research you can invest that hundred dollars so when you come back after 10 years maybe it became 140 dollars but the money by itself will not do anything so again like it's a tool that we need to learn to use it you know and money uh, many people bring it from bible as well but the love of money is something that bible mentions is not good thing but uh Money itself, we, we do need money. Like I'm not telling that for money, you should go and do anything uh, out, out of mind. No, no, no. In that case, yes, it's, it's not a good thing in, in, in that sense. But money is a good thing for us to live in uh, current society, you know. With nowadays, with digital money, lots of like these cryptocurrencies. Again, like as you mentioned, you do something, you need to get paid for it. I owe you, you know, someone, uh, how I need to thank you. One time I can give you chocolate. Next time I can give you bread. But maybe you don't need chocolate or you don't eat bread. Mm-hmm. So you need to have money to make your own choices, you know. So money is very important uh, part in any any place you go, you know, anywhere you go. Um, it is about money. And uh, one thing came to my mind when you were talking about your teacher uh, point um, in many cases when you just don't think about monetary reward you just provide value you just help someone money will come automatically because like again people will somehow try to thank you you know i'm a big believer of that as well and uh, i'm not like looking for money I, I do my best to be present with my client try my best to listen to the questions they are asking or the concerns they have, or the situation to understand. I'm not thinking like sitting and thinking about how much this person will pay me. And then automatically, like with some uh, universal like force, money comes in. Versus for you just think about money all the time in a sense like you cannot do something just purely for money. Of course, in many situations we do. We go to work, we don't like that place, but we go to get our paycheck. But it comes to the moment when your cup is filled now and it, it, there is no more place to handle the situation. So you're like, I need to find something that I really enjoy doing, even if I need to get some pay cut. I, I was living on 50000 but I am going to live now on 25,000 but I want to do something that I enjoy doing you know because in that way first it's about your health you know and stress and uh, of course like in recent in, in recent times I heard that stress we can look something positive as well versus always like looking at the stress being negative stress is negative only if you can keep it inside unfortunately it will do something bad to your health but if you are using stress as a positive in my opinion subject if you are stressing it means that you need to do some type of action and i'm not necessarily telling that you you need to go and start earning money or find a job but maybe you just dance maybe you just sing maybe you just meditate you just do some type of activity to 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 center yourself 
because like I haven't seen a dancing person who is stressing, you know, <laughs> or like singing person who is stressing. So it'll be really hard. You need to choose either you stress or you sing. So you just sing at that moment. I know it will be really hard, but just sing. Just that that moment will pass. And then you deal with that stressful situation in a sense, thinking of like, oh, this is the opportunity for me. Then it means I need to change something, you know? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love that so much. And I'd like to actually share something that happened to me because when I was still in my corporate job, I, I used, I come from a corporate job. And back then, I was so frustrated with my own job and I was not happy with it. I was, you know, I was being paid, oh, I would say, okay, it wasn't, you know, like the top, but it was okay. But I was so fr frustrated that, um, to comfort myself, I would do, uh, how I think the word, the term would be, you know, like shopping out of frustration. So by the end of the month, almost always, I would have to ask someone in my family to borrow money from to, to, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to, to pay the last couple, couple of days of the month, which wasn't healthy. And at some point I decided I need to change something. And I actually, like you just said, mentioned, I went down with my hours, which means instead of working full time, I went down to only working four days a week and just having that one day extra and just being able to have one full day to myself to do whatever I wanted to do actually took out so much of the frustration that by the end of the month, I was actually saving money with less, so you know, even, yeah. even though I was receiving less by the end of the month, but I was saving money and that was such a huge pff, aha moment for myself going like, okay, so it's all, if you look at the energy behind it, it's not about doing things just because you have to. It's actually, like you said, becoming conscious of what am I doing? Why am I doing it for? Am I enjoying myself? What energy am I putting into that? And the second thing, and that came from when I started to be a, a solopreneur for myself, um, at the beginning, of course, I tried, and, and this is something for all my empaths out there, because there's one thing called our brain, and then there's our energy system, because from my head, I wanted to build my business on, you know, on me, like you said, offering beautiful, wonderful content to support people. But underneath in my energetic system, I had the the belief or the feeling, I'm going to put it as a feeling or the energy of lack, because I need to create money with my business. My business needs to be, you know, my piggy bank. I need to start creating something so that clients come and pay for what I'm offering. And that was so inside in, in in how how do I put this? Was so deep rooted in my own system that of course my business didn't start running properly until I said, okay. What am I need to follow my own flow, my own bliss, but I also need to let go of this thinking that I'm lacking something that I have to do. Like you said, the the must, the should have, the should, I should do this and that. Maybe just, you know, go for a run, go for a walk, start dancing a little bit, you know, relax yourself, stop, take yourself out of that lack mentality you know, mm -hmm. um, in Germany, we always say, schaffe, schaffe, Häuslebau, you know, like you have to work and work and work so you can build your house and you can, you know, like do your things. Mm -hmm. But um, if I d only do that for that energy, then how am I going to become friends with the money that's going to come in? It's always, it, it, it's mm -hmm. always going to feel like, um, what do you call that? Um, when you had a, 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 no, it's not a severance package, but you know, when you, when you have a um, an accident and someone else has to pay you because you had that accident, there's this. Oh, okay. Mm. But I think you know what mm. I mean. It's like yeah, yeah, I they're know. paying you for uh, your what, pain, what basically. You yes, I understand. And um, compensation, more compensation. Like, you know? Yeah, and that's yes. and basically, if you're not doing your job or in 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 a way that fulfills you, that 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 brings you to a good energy. Um, it's always going to feel like compensation. So that's the energy you're putting into your money. Right. How are you going to get out of this if you're not going to start, you know, you have to start to become more conscious of of what you're doing to come to allow money to come in. 
And then once, like you said, when you become this conscious, that's when you can start, you know, looking into, because I, I love that investment idea because that's what starts creating passive income. So you can choose more and more and you get more and more of your freedom to do whatever you want. So this is like a calling to everyone out there to really become more conscious about their money energy. Because like, like we just said, the more you are conscious of it, you can decide. And like you said, you can take control of it and you can use the tool instead of being a victim of it. And uh, before I comment on passive income and also comment the other components that you need to, in my opinion, to have in your life for abundance, I want to mention two things you talk about. Very great point, by the way, May, you made. So first, nowadays, there is this movement in the United States, at least I hear a lot recently, for about four-day weeks. So some corporates start offering that. So it, uh, you, you are the right example to take um, um, experience from, like how it helped in your case. So we'll see how that part goes. Then the second point you mentioned about shopping, uh, and that's again like behavioral, psychological way of like um, avoiding the pain or avoiding the situation uh, in, in, in working in the environment that you don't like enjoying, or there is some called impulse buying you know you just you buy for this moment satisfaction and then maybe tomorrow you look back and you're like do i even need this extra shirt or do i need these headphones my old headphones working fine so i always um uh, suggest my uh listeners my followers that instead of waiting 24 hours to make your final decision decision let's stretch let's wait for 72 hours so for three days, just wait, okay? You want that TV, no problem. Just can you wait for three days Then you, after you make your final decision? Because maybe at that moment, you're like, I don't need to spend that $2,000, $1,000 on that new TV, you know? I don't even want to watch TV whatsoever so I can read book instead. So this is like something that we need to take ownership, understand that we have that we are just spending money for our instant gratification. And nowadays, with all this internet and everything accessible on our fingerprints, it's really hard to have patience. So I'm trying my best to remind myself that everything takes time. The same way it goes with our businesses, you know. It takes time for people know about May or know about Tohan, what they are doing. Sometimes it can be even complicated. When it comes to money, it's already complicated. We call it like sleeping pills. Some people listen to me if I talk in like economical or professional uh, terminology and they will fall asleep because it is not interesting to talk about money. So if everyone wants the money right now, right now. And the uh, point, uh, la last point that you mentioned about passive income, it is about passive income. It is about uh, at least if you are not even approaching 100% financial independence, but you are going towards that. So your work becomes a choice. So instead of working to pay your bills, you are choosing if you want to work or no. Because very possible you became a millionaire or billionaire nowadays would be, you still want to work because you are a librarian who likes the library. Maybe you are a doctor who likes helping people and, and there is nothing wrong with it. But you don't, you are not forced to force yourself to wake up and, dark mornings or snowy weather and go to war because if you don't go to war, no one will pay your rent. So this is like very important for um, our, audience, uh, our audience to learn that you need to have some type of uh, passive income because what means passive income? So pretty much you put your money in your money works for you. O opposite when in many cases we work for our money. So money works for us in this case. And regardless of you are home sleeping or you are doing your podcast, your company, which is again, maybe po po uh, portion of Apple, maybe portion of McDonald's, maybe portion of Starbucks, maybe portion of Costco, they are working and they are making money for you, you know? So they are paying you dividends, something that major public companies usually pay. It is not, of course, like nothing is guaranteed in, uh, in, in investment and everything. So you need to invest responsibly. So you need to uh, do your research to find out what is your risk tolerance when you need the money out. Because maybe you need the money out in 
eight months or a year. And then the moment you try to take out, the market is down and you will take a loss when you take the money out versus if you have a long uh, time horizon, you are saving for your retirement, maybe it's a 10 year or 20 year or 30 years from now, then the chances are that overall trend as it showed, it will go up as well. Like, of course, some days it can go down 20%, but some days it can go up 20%. So there is only one certainty when it comes to investing. It will be volatile, you know, there is no other certainty. <laughs> but when you, when, when you are teaching yourself, when you are educating yourself, all the tools are available. You can go ahead and Google about it and uh, you will find, by the way, you need to be careful what you Google about as well because there are so much information put out from people who are not competent in certain subjects that you can just read something, go do it, and then you get big tax bill or you just like regret what you did because you didn't understand. So always do your homework. Make sure the sources that you are learning from are they have the authority for you to talk about all these different stuff they with their experience, education, or it is someone who did themselves so they can show you the path. What what I like about that the the part of investing that you're also talking that you said earlier, like if I'm a Starbucks fan and I like them, why not invest in them? And I think that gives you a possibility to actually choose companies that have or or stand for your values and you can actually support them and and do the the you know by either shopping with them not just shopping with them but actually you know investing in the company um which also helps you know like like you said like with the star starbucks example that you said earlier um but i think it's and you also don't need to i'm sorry to interrupt but you don't even need to pick and choose again there are something called indexes you know when they are they, they are just baskets of like 500 companies in some cases even 2000 3000 companies so it's basket of all these different companies from different areas of course if you are someone who is not okay of investing in let's say oil producing companies or there are some because they think about environment of course there are certain type of buckets that they are uh, investing only in renewable energy, let's say, or green energy. You can make all these choices. But instead of picking and choosing, you can invest pretty much everything, like portion of all different companies, you know. So index funds is something um, I always suggest for beginner investors, at least to start with that, because, again, like they are well diversified. And in many cases, they are low cost. So you are not paying lots of money on the investments that you are doing because again it is taken from your money you know if you pay a fee to somebody else it is taken from you unless it is some reasonable fee and you see the value of paying that but please continue no 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 that was that was perfect because it's it's uh, i think i mean i think there's different kinds of forms of investing right because sometimes right. we want to invest in our own knowledge so we you know we yeah. invest in a course to learn more like like we just said which is also would be an investment for my myself but it it's different if i'm doing it consciously deciding on okay where am i going to put my money instead of uh, you know, just like you, like we said earlier, the the impulse shopping, yeah, that that gives you a, a quick moment. Um, and I love that you said that part about waiting a couple of minutes because I mean a couple of days with making the decision to buy because that's actually how I brought myself out of the whole thing and became sort of a little bit of a minimalist. I'm, I don't want to say I'm completely a minimalist because I know there's people that are more minimal than me. Extremely. But, <laughs> extremely more minimal. <laughs> but, and, and, and this is for, for all the, for, for all the uh, empaths out there and highly sensitive people because we tend to be sucked into that hole of consumerism. Because I remember for me, it was like, oh, there's a new book about this. And then I would buy it and only read two pages. And then I would move on to the next book and or to the next mm. thing. And, or, or for me as a multi-potentialite, of course, I have like, oh, my God, now I like knitting. Oh, no, now I like photography or, you know, whatever. And it would bring you into all those things. So one of the things that I started doing, and I think this helps a lot to become more conscious instead of, you know, going out there and buying all those things very fast to take a moment and to, you know, like in my case, I would, I would, cause I, I was a huge uh, Amazon client. 
and you know I had everything on Amazon. So at one point I just started to put everything in my in my in my what do you call uh, in my you know in my order in the cart in, in the cart yes. exactly. Thank you. I would put everything in my cart, but instead of buying it right away, I would leave it there, and I would actually not just wait two or three days. I would actually tell myself to wait at least one or two weeks. Nice. And nowadays, sometimes I have things in there for months because <laughs> I'm going like, am I really good? Do I really need it? And sometimes you... I delete it. Sometimes I put it on the side and then I put it back in. But it, it for me, because it gives me the feeling of, okay, it's there. I could buy it right now, but let me think about it. Let's or, you know, like, let me feel into it a little bit more. And for someone who invests, uh, okay, man, it's good. Like you, you go buy more, you know, <laughs> because like when you are, when you have already the investor mindset, you're like, oh, do I really need this to buy or versus I invest in that company? Yeah. You know, and you are becoming part owner of Amazon, of course. Like, and <laughs> I wish one day you become the hundred percent owner uh, of the Amazon, which is pretty much impossible uh, when you try. <laughs> If we go to my details, if you want to have more than 10% of certain company, you need to get approval from Federal Reserve Bank, Central Bank in the United States. But the point is not about like these technicalities. It's just to have that uh, feeling of being an owner. So instead of like spending and being a consumer, you own some type of assets, you know, because um, I'm sure our listeners read books as well. And I know Mary's as well. And uh, there is a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I was going to talk about that one too. I love that one. You see, now I, 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 know, I know like the question in advance. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but Robert Kiyosaki talks about uh, quadrants. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, he divides uh, four, piece, uh, four pieces. Let's say it's a paper and you divide it in four pieces. In one quadrant, there are people who are on W2, like you mentioned, used to be in corporate world. You know, I used to be a banker. So we, uh, we wait for our W2, our salary, our wages to come in to leave. That's one quadrant. And then right below that, that is some um, people who are self-employed. These are people who are barbers, who are mechanics, who are still like uh, have a little bit independence because at least I hope they are doing something they'd like doing, but they need to be on their business all day long. Otherwise, like you cannot be a barber and go to Italy who will uh, cut hairs for your uh, clients in Germany. So you need to be on top of your business as a self-employed. Then the other two quadrants, uh, one is business owners. These are real business owners, people who figure out that either technology can work for them or other people can work for them. So regardless of they are in Italy, Germany, or uh, Nicaragua, or in United States, business will work. So these are the business owner, owners. And the fourth quadrant is, in my opinion, the best that we are trying to move uh, at least like our listeners there, mm -hmm. it's called investors. These are the people who realize that money can work for them. So I know everyone would like to have a business, but not everyone has this business entrepreneurial mindset. So for this uh, group of people, there are already existing businesses that all you need to do to participate in them with investing your money in them. So just choose which quadrant you are now. You are W2, you are self-employed, you are a business owner, you are an investor. And think of outside of the box that there are other opportunities out there. And as the saying goes, life is short. If you don't do it now, when, when else you will do? When people ask me like, oh, when is the best time to invest? I paraphrase the Chinese proverb and mentioning that the best time to invest was 20 years ago. But the second best time is today. So you start today, you know, you, you just don't wait for another five year. And then like, oh, I wish when I heard <laughs> May's conversation with Ohan, I did my budget and I started investing. <laughs> so take the action ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Because you just mentioned uh, Rube, uh, the book. Robert um, Thank you. 
today I, I don't know I'm, I'm not good with names today um, totally. what would you what do you think about investing in a real estate like he because he's he gives the examples in the book yeah. about the whole real estate so I don't have anything against real estate I don't have anything against cryptocurrencies I don't have anything against NFTs or any other type of investment that got created but because I'm not uh, specialized in that areas. I'm not uh, taking a responsibility to talk about, you know. Mm -hmm. Real estate can be good investment. Of course, if you have a tenant, you will receive some type of like rent payments. And that sounds nice. But in the meantime, there are so many details involved with it. Uh, starting from repairs, starting from having a bad tenant who is not paying, doesn't have any assets, so you will not be able to recover the rent. So I'm not big fan, uh, big fan of the stuff that I'm not specialized in. For example, like if you ask me, like I'm sorry, but I couldn't like keep my sneeze. You know, okay. this this part I believe it will be edited. <laughs> We can. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, if you if you ask me, like, oh, should I invest in cryptocurrencies? I cannot advise you because I don't know anything about them. I know the same way that you heard of on social media or maybe re re read a couple articles. That's why when you don't know what you are investing in, make sure invest enough that you are willing to lose. What I mean by that, because you haven't done your homework and you are not well, warm. Buffett, which is one of the richest people in the planet on the planet, he does his research all the time about the companies that he's investing with. But I'm not Warren Buffett or the person who asked me question is not Warren Buffett. Did you do your homework? They didn't do their homework. So invest only enough that you are willing to lose, you know. But when it comes to, again, like index funds, when you instead of like picking and choosing stocks, you are investing whole entire, let's say, U.S. stock market or international stock market or global stock market, then the chances are uh, very like, little that all these companies will go out of business unless of course god forbid something some type of catastrophe happens or the system gets changed from let's say uh, market economy somehow it goes back to soviet times planning economy you know which is now there's people becoming more aware of that market economy is the way that it works so my comments will be uh, on real estate do your homework And if you find a good property and you know you can manage it, go for it, absolutely. Oh, perfect. Ohan, I really love to talk to you more about this, but we're, we're finding, we're, I mean, we could do this all day long probably. Again, and find we can things. do again. Yes. <laughs> but for this episode, we reach our time limit. <laughs> exactly. But um, I just wanted to recap for, for our uh, listeners in there. For, especially because for, for our empath and highly sensitive people, money is energy. That was the very first, one of the very first sentences Ohan told us. And it's about, you know, looking for yourself, being more conscious. Like I always say, be conscious about your energy field and your feelings. It's the same thing with money because money is, is it's a tool and it shows us where there's still things that we want to heal. If something's not working out, if we're in the lack of money, that's also something that needs to be healed within our system so that we can become more free and more abundant. Like everyone is talking about the whole, you know, abundance and everything that we want to have. It's also entwined into the whole money energy. And, but like Ohan said, it's energy. So we decide how we want to, Uh, in what way we'd like to move it. But to be able to do that, we need to become more conscious of it. We need to become more conscious of ourselves, how we spend it, how we deal, how is our relationship with money? Like, do I love it? Or do I have any expectations on it? Or am I thinking too much into the lag? And um, it's easy. I think we're living in an in a day of, how do you, day and age that, um, 
where we have so many possibilities to find ways to do things. I mean, there are so many uh, different kinds of people around the globe, especially the last two years or the last 10 years that we've had social media and, and internet in, in our lives where we find so many ways. Like if you, if you were listening in and you were like, okay, so I think I belong to the people that, you know, live paycheck to paycheck, but I'd like to become someone to invest something. There are so many ways to create $100 each month. It, it can start with only $100 each month or, or even maybe because I know there are some systems with $50 so or 50 euros for the for our European audience. Um, but there are so many ways to create that if it's, you know, the, there are so many websites where you can, you know, like either create ebooks or, you know, make photography where you get some something out of it where you can start creating a little, a smaller amount because and become friends with that. You don't have to be an entrepreneur for that. You just have to, you know, play, be playful with what you like to do and what you love to do and experience and see where are ways where maybe you can actually create a small income that you can then use to start investing for yourself to have that liberty to do even more of what you love and what you do. That's so amazing. <laughs> Nicely said. Nicely said. And uh, remember to keep some of that energy for yourself the same way keep some money for yourself as well. Because, like, again, like, uh, keep, I mean, like, saving and investing in that sense, you know, so you are not spending everything, like, the same way with the energy. And I'm happy uh, for the opportunity to share the message. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, too. What would be like the last thing you'd like, like one last thing that you'd like to tell our audience? Last thing, um, first and foremost, again, like, thank you. I would like for uh, our audience to stay in touch with me and uh, they can literally like write an email to me and I'll be able to answer them as much at least as I can in, in time um, time sense. But the, they can go to my webpage ohandamoneydoctor.com also on Instagram, on um on LinkedIn, on YouTube, you will find me as Ohan the Money Doctor or with my name, Ohan Kaikchan. So let's stay in touch. But at the, the last words that I want uh, to finish, they will um, find below. The notes. Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to put all the links. We're going to put them all in the show notes and in the description. So if you're interested and you're going like, oh, my God, Ohan has so beautiful energy. I want to work with him. We're going to put everything in the show notes. <laughs> My pleasure. And the, and the last point I would like to, ma to mention, like, earn more and live below your means. Uh, and the, in that way, you will, um, you will hack just because of, like, I couldn't find a better word, but you will hack the system of going into debt versus you will have your own, own bank. When in the United States, it is called emergency fund, which is regardless of where in the world you are, God forbid, emergencies happen. So at least have something to save for emergencies as well so you don't run uh, spending from credit card or borrowing from a bank. So always keep in your mind to live below your means. Love that. Thank you so much, Ohan. It was amazing you, and mate. wonderful to have you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Likewise, everyone. Thank you so very much. Appreciate thank it. you. <laughs> and thank you everyone for tuning in and listening in i hope that we brought you a little bit closer to a positive mindset towards money money is just a tool we are the ones that decide where it goes and with this i'd like to leave you until next time thank you for tuning in and as always serve your energy wave baby bye <laughs>